run away. I'm tired looking after the folks. Someone can take care of them. We go to Mexico. They want officers in the Mexican army. We'd be so happy there. I'd work for you. I'd do anything for you. You know you don't love Melanie. And Melanie can't. Well, Dr. Fontaine said she could never have any more children, and I could we give you... We'll forget that, dear, Do you think I could ever forget it? Have you forgotten it? Can you honestly say you don't love me? No, I don't love you. It's a lie. And, of course, she was a brilliant actress. They tested her, silent tests, wardrobe tests. She was just the ideal. the most glowing, vibrant, dynamic woman I had ever met. Don't. Don't. You love me. No, don't. Yeah, you love me. No, don't. Don't. You love me. You we won't do me. this. I tell you, we won't do it. It won't happen again. Hey. I'll take Melanie in the dating. Go. Please, you love me. It's all right, I'll say it. I love your courage and your stubbornness. I love him so much that a moment ago I could have forgotten the best wife a man ever had. But Scarlett, I'm not going to forget her. I loved her. I loved her beauty, I loved her talent, and I loved the fact that she represented something that women were not at that time. Namely, strong, persuasive, determined. We were going to get to the top, and she clawed her way right up the top in that book. I'm witness, they're not going to leave me. I'm going to live through this, and when it's all over, I'll never be hungry again. She was a, an exquisite creature. She had very beautiful manners and um, a very feminine way. She was also, I think, capricious and a bit perverse which made her interesting, of course. She was rather a complex person, and very like Scarlett. We just fell in at the last moment to the perfect Scarlett O'Hara. Well, the cast is finally in place. Filming is about to begin. Come back to the set for Gone with the Wind where only Job could be comfortable. Our world will be right back. Gone with the Wind. Making of a Classic. 1939. Welcome back to a special edition of Our World. Sir Lawrence Olivier once noted that acting is not quite the occupation of an adult. Sir Lawrence Olivier was once married to Vivian Lee, the actress chosen to play Scarlett O'Hara. As you will see, where Gone with the Wind is concerned, acting was one of only several occupations not quite suited for adults. Begin with the directors. The producer did. All right. Gone with the Wind, Jackie. Quiet, speak. Speak, speak. Hit the second sink. Quiet, speak. Quiet, simple. Come on. Vivian Lee, she loved George Cukor, and therefore she hated Victor Fleming, who replaced him. Fleming is a man's director. And he, he likes things gutsy, and he wanted, like, for Vivian Lee might be, tend to be a little bit on the feminine side, and he wanted her to be bitchy. He would goad her into being bitchy. And he always teased her by calling her fiddle-dee-dee. For some reason or other, that annoyed her. My guess is that purposely he did that to keep her bitchy. Even Mr. Fleming, strong and macho as he was, had a nervous breakdown at one point. It was a picture full of nervous breakdowns, or potential breakdowns, including mine. After one day, Selznick had shot one and a half scenes and spent more than a million dollars, a third of his total budget. But he refused to compromise his obsession with authenticity. Production manager Ray Kloon tried to bring order out of the chaos. The uh, biggest production challenge on Gone with the Wind uh, was probably David Selznick because David used to call me between 2 and 3 in the morning, often, uh, to find out whether or not I could change the aspect of the scene. 
in his desire for what he hoped would be almost perfection, he made life very miserable for everybody else. The hours, the working hours, the perfection. There were 5,500 costume sketches made for that film. The hardest thing was to keep up with, uh, keep up with David Selznick and his, uh, his change that he did day and night. Sometimes I had to rebuild entire sets up and down the street. It was up to me to uh, keep ahead of him. He was considered a nuisance because nothing ever pleased him. Victor Fleming got so angry many, many, many times that he'd walk off the set because Mr. Selznick's directing the picture. In between rewrites and nitpicking, Selznick devised one incredible sequence that, given the equipment available at the time, was impossible to shoot. Oh, that railroad sequence is uh, still one of the most uh, sensational things that's ever been put on film. The uh, challenge there was finding a, a, a crane that was large enough uh, to deliver the kind of shot that he wanted. The scene started on a very small focus of a few men dying, writhing on the ground. You didn't know where they were, what was going on. You knew the Scarlet was going to come looking for the doctor. And then as, a, as the camera pulled back, the whole dimension widened and widened. And in order to get it, to cover the whole railroad station, they had to have a crane which was higher than anything that had ever been built. It was such a masterpiece of a shot. That particular sequence, there were only 500 and some odd uh, extras available. So we had anticipated that and uh, had about a thousand dummies. Subsequently, the Screen Extras Guild sued us and wanted us to pay uh, for extras for all of the dummies. Then there was the business about Technicolor. The cameras were huge. They used three separate negatives, red, green, and blue. Many producers thought color was a costly gimmick. Some had said the same thing about talking pictures. Wrong again. We had, uh, had changed to color. Color was brand new at the time for all of us. All our cameramen, camera people, it was new to them. It was a very expensive work because we would make test after test after test and we tested every single thing, every costume, the looks on people. We spent weeks and weeks so to be sure it was right. I love the old Technicolor cameras. I always felt like I was acting for them because they're huge and, and they envelop you. I mean, they, you, they're part of what you're doing. They, you are in the camera, you know, you are the film as you do it. Gable didn't like his costumes and didn't like a script that changed faster than he could memorize it, but not faster than his co-star could memorize it. Vivian Lee and Clark Gable were uh, very incompatible. Gable was always fighting for his life against his spirited girl. He felt that it was a, a woman's picture. It was Scarlett O'Hara's picture. And he says, I'm a big star. I don't want to play second fiddle to some dame. I don't know if I should say this, but you know, Clark Gable had false teeth. And she didn't like to kiss him. <laughs> It's wonderfully constructed. Something happens every three minutes. Then the theme itself, which I suppose is survival, is eternal and it's universal. <laughs> 